Whether you're looking for a Chevy car, truck, or SUV, go see my friends at Apple Chevy in Tinley Park. With over 500 new and used vehicles in stock, they have what you're looking for. And at the lowest price possible, go to AppleChevy.com. Show with Anna DeBlanc is right here at 720 WG. And don't forget, on the 29th of October, that is a week from Thursday, we're taking this show on the road. CD and me in Frankfurt, we're going to be there for a Halloween show, all brought to you in part of the WGN Radio Hometown Voices Tour, presented by Allstate, Chicago's own good hands. There are tickets still available. These are free, but you got to get them. That's how we do this, because it's limited seating. There are a handful of tickets still available today. I checked just before the show to see what the numbers were. And we're right on the edge here of full capacity. So, if you want to do this, you got to go to WGNRadio.com slash events and download your tickets. All right. It's just that simple. You can wear a costume. You cannot wear a costume. Anna's wearing a costume. I'm wearing one by yep. force and mm-hmm. handpicked by other members of the team. By men on by the men team. By men on the team, by which men on the team. is very, very concerning. I have not yes. seen said costume yet. Judy is Judy is wearing a costume, but she uh, picked her own costume. She did not allow men to choose her destiny. I just mentioned it, and you loved it, so now I have to be it. Mm-hmm. You can pull it off. This one you can do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, ben Bradley is standing by on the Super Celebrity Hotline from your ABC7 here in Chicago. But he's not in Chicago. He's actually uh, with Sandy Jackson holding her hand in her last moments of freedom before she uh, has reported to prison uh, for uh, just being... A dumbass. I would say, for lack of a better term, that is what I think happened here for both of these people, for both uh, Jesse Jackson Jr. and Sandy Jackson, who just started getting totally lost in their own delusion about their importance. And next thing you know, she finds herself in Alderson, West Virginia. How is Alderson, West Virginia, Ben? Yeah, what's it like there? It is incredibly beautiful, actually. The leaves have turned. We're in the foothills of the Allegheny Mountains. And uh, as I talked with uh, one guy who spent quite a bit of time in this women's prison camp here uh, in Alderson, West Virginia, if you got to serve federal time, they say this is the place you want to do it. This is the uh, prison camp uh, where your friend Martha Stewart actually served her time, and thus earning it the nickname Camp Cupcake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder how the cupcakes are there. They're not so good. I'm told they're not on the menu, and the food is actually uh, not as bad as at some federal institutions, but I'm told it's not that great. It's uh, pretty much the same thing day in, day out. Yeah, I, you know what? And uh, I've gotten to know, we've, we've, uh, all of us in our business mm-hmm. get, get to know somebody who goes away to federal prison sure. at some point in their life. And uh, no matter what, even in the, even in the, uh, the, the camps. Mm hmm. It's you're still in federal prison. Yeah, you don't get to go home. Nothing pleasant about it. Yeah, I'm sure on the inside. Well, there's one guy we talked to today. Uh, told us he he served some time at a prison camp uh, out in California and now works with uh, inmates uh, here at Alderson. Uh, he told us that you know the hardest thing is the separation. You, know, you can kind of do the day in and day out. Your your day, Sandy Jackson's case, is likely to be filled with. You know, a, a work detail in these first few weeks, she'll probably get assigned to either kitchen duty or the landscaping crew, which he says is actually pretty tough in the winter because all the snow they get out here, they got to inmate shovel the snow. Um, but it, but it's that separation that causes the, the, the time drag and the fact that every single day virtually is the same. Is the same. Yeah. He told me uh, the only thing you have to look forward to is uh, if they're playing a new movie on the weekend in the, uh, in the rec room. Right. And sometimes they have TV. Like if there's a in men's prisons, they look forward to weekends where there's sports on. Mm-hmm. And then, but there's always one guy who controls the TV. Yeah. So whatever he wants to watch. Yeah. That's for everybody. That's how it goes. And the but, guy but has neck not, tattoos. This place is not prison as most people think of prison. There are no fences. There's no barbed wire. Uh, the inmates actually stay in large dormitories. Uh, I'm told it's actually a lot like uh, is portrayed in Orange Is the New Black. Uh, you know, there's about a thousand women, 1200 women in total here, and they're divided up into pods, uh, on bunk beds where there's about a hundred women per pod, and they have these kind of six foot cinder block 
wall dividers. But when you're on the top bunk, you can kind of look around and see everyone else and hear everyone else snoring and oh, gosh. and uh, doing what they do at night in prison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, Sounds yeah. perfect. Yeah. It, uh, Tom Wolf wrote about that in A Man in Full. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, boy. You don't want to know what they do at night. You know, that's it's it's a uh, yeah. Oh, boy. What about didn't, didn't family members drop her off and didn't Jesse Jackson Jr. also accompany her, her husband, to he's on supervised release. Didn't he accompany her to the prison? Right, his release is uh, is done. I mean, he is no longer uh, in the in the in the care of confines at the um, Federal Bureau of Prisons. Uh, and it was at, a month after he completed his sentence that Sandy Jackson had to report. And yeah, we spotted him uh, this big black SUV. Uh, he was riding shotgun as they pulled up to the gate here uh, at the prison, and uh, she, Sandy Jackson, was actually in the back seat. Uh, facing backwards, which all I could assume was that was, you know, to, to try to avoid uh, us getting her picture. Uh, they spent about uh, 20 minutes or so inside the prison gates um, when uh, uh, she would have, you know, basically been handed off to a corrections officer for processing. And then, you know, about 15 or 20 minutes later, uh, Jesse Jackson Jr., uh, uh, was driven off, and then trailing uh, his his big SUV was a smaller compact car with a, an Ohio license plate, which we presume is uh, Sandy Jackson's uh, uh, family because she's from Ohio. Oh, right, mm-hmm. right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, West Virginia. But, but just think about that visual, guys. I mean, it's it's it, we're going to say in our reporting at four thirty and six. I mean, it's it's like a husband and wife prison relay team here. I mean, he serves his time tags her, then she comes and serves her time. And uh, the reason the judge staggered the sentences like that is is obviously so their kids would have uh, you know one parent at home, which is you know, not a luxury a lot of people get. That's right. true. And you know what? And and they should be very thankful that they got that. Mm-hmm. Because that isn't something that you that you get. Right. No, I mean, it isn't something that afforded to everybody. No, and in this case, their children are young enough that you know that it, I, I think that's uh, you know for the children's sake, that's a good thing. It is be- basically benevolence of the sentencing judge True. that that did that, and it's not necessarily because they're Jesse and Sandy Jackson. It's they they do do this for families of young children to try to you know minimize the damage on the kids, mm-hmm. and and I and it's and you know it's appropriate. I don't have a, a, any kind of a problem with it, but what what I'd like to see, and I, I think we've seen a little bit of this from Jesse Jackson Jr. Is there has been contrition on the other side? Mm-hmm. He's talked about is, is, since he's come out. He's been very limited in his public uh, uh, pro, uh, proclamation here. But he is going to write a book. He said, and it, and what what he has said has been uh, by by his standards, certainly the standard he had set for himself before he went away. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been very demure. He has been. Yes. Uh, he's, he has not been the kind of braggadocious blowhard that he was going into this. He and, seems to have given a lot of thought, and prison will do that to you, but came out with saying the right things that I think all of us needed to hear. So now, in well, the, he, he also seemed like a shell of his former self when he came out. Uh, he did an, an interview with uh, our Cheryl Burton in which he invited her mm-hmm. uh, and our camera crew into into their home in D.C., and he you know, pointed out, you know, that he was wearing a suit that had moth holes in it, and he didn't care, and he was wearing, uh, uh, you know, black shoes and white socks, and you know, this was a guy who was all about image before, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, he he, I think both visually and emotionally, um, seemed far different than when he than when he went in, and obviously he had said that you know he had had some emotional difficulties yeah. and was battling depression. Uh, yeah, you know, which is you know a, a very real issue for a lot of people. Oh, no question. And and I think I think that there was some people who felt compassion for him because of that, and it felt as though you know he's this is a guy who uh, you know certainly needed a lesson to learn. And I got to tell you something. I looked. I always looked at this, and I followed these guys you know pretty closely over the last number of years mm-hmm. uh, in terms of what they were doing publicly. And I. Uh, I gotta say, I, I found that her influence on him was, and it's you know everybody's got to behave their, everybody's got to take responsibility for their own actions. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying this is all at her behest, but her influence on him was never all that good. 
You know, I mean, he, she, I think she was always pushing him to do more and do, to go harder and harder and harder, and then she became an alderman. This is, to me, the worst part of this was that they used uh, all the, the name recognition and power incumbent upon the Jackson family in this town to make sure that she became an alderman, and then she moved to D.C. and kept the job. Right, she was sort of an right. absent um, alderman who didn't seem to be advocating for her right. people, her constituents, right. if she's not even there most of the time. It was. It's, but it, to your point, Roa, you know, marriage is a partnership, and whether it's the you know, those undercover tape recordings we heard of Rod and Patty Blagojevich with her egging him on uh, during the Senate deal investigation, or uh, Sandy and, and Jesse Jackson. I mean, you know, you know, he was redoing their yeah. their their Washington D.C. home and bringing home furs and minks and yeah. a ton of money. And yeah, absolutely, she's aware of it. She yeah, signed yeah. a tax return. Yeah, which is why, which is why she's in the prison camp. Right, right, right. right. It's why that's why Ben has to be in West Virginia today, as opposed to back here. Yeah, uh, Wrigley Field. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. surprised as everybody when they when they told me yesterday. I thought I was going to the Cub game. Yeah, no, no. Elgis, Elgis got that job. You didn't get that job. (laughs) I don't know what happened there. All right. Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) Um, All right. So, well, uh, enjoy. West Virginia is beautiful. It's maybe the most one of the most picturesque picturesque states in the uh, the lower 48. Really? Not one I've been gorgeous. to before. I never oh. think of going to West Virginia when I get a couple days off. It's, it I'll is believe you. absolutely gorgeous. It's the people you got to worry well, about. Well, I hear the visitation rules here are very liberal. Uh, <laughs> all weekend long, you can visit Anna. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. I got that going for me. <laughs> It'll be very good. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ben. Appreciate your time, sir. You can You're see Ben Bradley's work today on ABC7 Chicago. He'll be there at uh, 5, and at, uh, probably there at 4.30. And the Cubs and still play tomorrow, so he can come back for that game if he wants to. Yes, he could. Yes, he could. Maybe he's going to have to spend the whole weekend. Oh. Stay there. Let's let's see who comes and visits her, Ben. We're sending you to West Virginia. Again, beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful I'd state. imagine, though, being camped out outside the prison probably isn't the most beautiful place. No. But Ben will make the most of it. He's that kind of guy. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> very resourceful. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, so Sarah Jindra, also very resourceful, is standing by with the WGN traffic trouble spots right now. Sarah. Were you guys just talking about Rob Elgis? Uh, we did mention him to make Ben feel badly about himself. <laughs> yeah, Why? we wanted to rub it in. He's yeah. sitting next to me here um, on the rooftop of Murphy's Bleachers. I'm going to have to tell him. Tell him we said hi. Tell him. Tell him we, we just say hi at hey, WGN Radio. Wait, put him on the put him on the phone yeah, for a second. Put him on the phone for a second. We'll get, to your, we'll get to your traffic in just one second. Hold on. Wait, am I live? Yeah, yes. yeah. Don't say anything. Don't swear. The uh, we just told we just talked to Ben Bradley and he was complaining that he has to be in Alderson, West Virginia, with Sandy Jackson and not at the Cubs game. And I pointed out that you got that assignment and he and he and, and, and he was physically disgusted by it. He's very angry. So I want you to go do something bad to his desk when you get back to work. Yeah, yeah, I saw him in the newsroom yesterday, and he got that assignment and had to literally leave the station and go get on an airplane. That's what he said. He said he was like, I thought I was getting the Cubs assignment, and Elgus got it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a big deal, though, being out there. I mean, the Jackson oh. family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, okay. oh that's what it is. That's the news yeah. yeah. You can't call my bluff on that, okay? Yeah. Okay, anchor boy. Give the, uh, give, the, give the phone back to our traffic reporter, would you? Hey, pleasure talking to you guys. Nice talking to you, Rob. It's always always good talk. Good talk, Rob. (laughs)